Hey, hey, Tony Gassens here. And I was filming this video already and I had an alarm set because I'm putting some more water in my pool. I had an alarm set and it went off and cut my video off. And I just, I hate having to try to edit or piece together videos. So I just had to start all over. So, but what I want to talk about is just some very alarming and just unsettling news and <laughs> I know the red pill community and the manosphere, you know, they probably going to be laughing at me and stitching the videos and stuff like that. But just very unsettling, al alarming news that I've come to find out about my female audience that is different than the male audience. And one lady told me if you say female you got to say male you can't say female then say man because she feel like female is uh degrading the word female is degrading and so i was just like oh man we we real sensitive now nah, we getting real sensitive it ain't like the word female mean the b word like that's it's just a scientific word of what you are female or male we just getting sensitive but it's one of the things that I was thinking about this and I and I wrote my dad about this one time and I was like, I sent him a tell like, and I was like, dad, like, I'm like, read, I'm like, when you're reading the Bible, like all the women in the Bible, you know, except for a few are painted as just conniving and scandalous. Like, okay, you got Eve and then you just keep on going, like even like Rachel and Leah and like they, they scamming their daddy and and you know tricking him out of stuff and then they fighting with each other over the man and like oh make your son go do this if you want to sleep with our husband tonight your son got to go do this for me and oh your your son got to go do this for me if you want to sleep with my husband tonight and i was just like mm. and then like delilah and, and even esther who was painted in like a good light but still used like influence still used like uh, uh, seductiveness, so to speak, to to get what she what she needed, and and just the other lady who had her daughter request the head of John the Baptist, and it just like man, and then just all this talking about like just the warnings, like even in Proverbs, just this type, watch out for this type of woman, watch out for this type of woman. And so, as you see, the Bible, you know, it's, it's very male-centered. And just the painting of the woman is not the greatest. But yet, in Ephesians 5, it talk about loving your wife as Christ loved the church. And the protection for the woman and telling the man, like, listen, if you lust after another woman, you've committed adultery in your heart. So, there is protection for a woman and reverence and respect for a woman telling the man you can't just be divorcing this woman like if she don't cheat on you you can't divorce her and so there is protection from god but just the examples of the women as you read through the bible is not the greatest it's like except for proverbs 31 which isn't a real woman it was kind of like to my understanding based on the, the beginning of that chapter is what the man's mom said to him about this type of woman but when you actually read it and what this woman is doing it's not something that any woman we've met is actually doing and so you know just talking about she go far to get the food she waking up when it's still dark she going to far away to get the food she bringing the food she she's sewing jackets <laughs> you know she in the marketplace she buy land, like who 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 mama done did that? Like ain't none of our mamas done went far away to get no food and in the marketplace, then buy land, then cooking or something or sewing jackets. And then somebody in the comments like, oh, my mom did that. And I am a proper 31 woman. But this is something we got to be real about because I'm going to tell you, the devil is very, very deceptive and he is using men and women, but 
he really, really starting to even more so use women more than ever. Like women starting to be used more than ever and losing their mind. And what really hit me is like, I've been doing coaching sessions 2024. I'm praying to the Lord. I don't have to do coaching sessions. I'm going to just be working with my year of coaching clients where I work with 10 people for the year, helping them in their life and business and all that. But just one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'm trying to get on out of that, just do group coaching. Because the more what I'm noticing, like as I'm doing sessions and I'm reading these emails and reading comments, I'm noticing a very strong Jezebel spirit. It's a strong Jezebel spirit. You know, me being a, a married man, I have to cut off connection to me because I'm married. So I could be really approached and kind of stalked and kind of followed by Jezebel spirits. But what I'm noticing is so many women, women of all ages, of all races, of all looks, shapes, colors, religions are watching my videos, but not actually growing, like not actually listening, not actually changing. And that, that shows me the presence of a demonic spirit amongst many women. And I'll be honest with you, men actually listen better. And I believe that's why men make such great soldiers in the army and why men build houses based on a blueprint. Men follow instructions and why men put together the cabinets and the beds and all of this based on them instructions in that little white pamphlet because men are very, men are creatures of habit. So I'm working with young men who are 18 to 22 years old. And I'm saying, hey, abstain from sex, abstain from masturbation. And the first time I say that, they don't really listen. And sometimes on the second time, they don't listen. Third time, they don't listen. But then around the fourth, fifth, sixth time, they actually start to listen. And they start to come to me and they start to like tell me, hey, man, me and such and such got a, got a bet like, See who could go the longest without watching porn. Like, see who could go the longest without masturbation. Like, they really start to listen, and then their life start to get better. Like, they start to ball out in their game. They start scoring more points. They start getting more wins. And they're like, hey, man, hey, TG, man, this work, man, you was right. Like, this focus, like, when you go online and you look online, I want you to search no fap, F-A-P. And you're going to see all these men talking about semen retention. Guess what? You don't see a single movement from women talking about um, orgasm retention or whatever it is. Egg retention in the sense of like not having orgasms, not masturbating. And that's what these men talking about. They talking about no masturbation, no sex, no release, like just channeling that sexual energy into something positive, into something different, into something more productive. But then on the same time, you see a lot of women that is promoting touching yourself. And when you really think about it, there's no benefits to that. You're feeding lust. You're feeding a sexual desire, which has nothing to do with the grand scheme of life. It has nothing to do with reproduction. It has nothing to do with success. It has nothing to do with getting better. It's literally a drug. It's an addiction. That's why I made that video slamming men who watch porn and telling men, if you're watching porn with a man and a woman, you are into men because you should not be sitting there looking at another man penis and enjoying that. And then men getting mad because I called it out. And I'm telling you, yeah, you in the men because the way the eyes work with the brain, the ears work with the brain, your brain don't know the difference. You, If you sitting there and you in a state of lust and you touching yourself while you looking at a man sleep with this other woman, then God talking about, oh, well, uh, it's women on women too. Yeah, that's what you say for the comments, but that ain't all you watching. You know, you watching a man getting that power on town 
And so you starting to get attracted to men. You starting to get turned on to men and see this just logical sense. This just logical. Just this just understanding the mind and how the mind work. Like if I sit and I stare at something every day, if I if I if I look at this set of golf clubs every day, I'm gonna start to want to go golf. If I if I sit and I just staring at this Lamborghini every day, I'm gonna start to want a Lamborghini. Like when I first saw a Rolls Royce coloring it, I'm, I'm like that look like a hearse. That's ugly. But the more I look at it, the more I look at it, the better it start to look. The better it start to look like, the more reasonable it start to be. So that's what I'm trying to tell you in that in that video what I was talking about. But one thing that I'm learning about women is that women don't actually listen. And when I say this, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities. So, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. So stay out your feelings if you're an exception to the rule and you don't have to be in the comments saying that. A lady wrote in today talking about delete her off the academy. It, I think it probably was the lady yesterday who was claiming she's speaking tongues and got all these gifts and tongues. I said, no, you don't, because if you speak in tongues, you inhabit by the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be in the comments going back and forth. You would have knew what I was talking to. You would have knew I was talking to the people that's faking. So if you're not faking, that wouldn't have stepped on your toes. That wouldn't have offended you. It would have made you laugh. But the fact that you got in your feelings and the fact that you had to come write a dissertation in the comments let me know that you faking speaking in tongues. So be quiet. Satan get thee behind me. And so what I'm noticing is, like, I'm seeing women that's, like, showing up at my events, coming in every class, like, paying to be in classes, watching all the videos, doing coaching sessions, but still in fornication. Still coming to me and telling me that they seducing men, that they in fornication, that they having sex, like, practically on the first night, in the first month. And I'm like, how can you watch all of my content and still have a Jezebel spirit? Like, still be in fornication. Like, still be sleeping around. Still be seducing men. So it's showing me that most women do not listen and are not trying to get better, are not trying to grow. And see the, see the reason why my audience, 95% women, I can't tell you because they ain't listening. But you notice the difference is it's 95% women, 5% men on YouTube, not across the board, but on YouTube. So what that's telling you is that the reason why men don't listen is because when men are convicted, men change. Men, we don't have the capability to listen to something every day and not change. Like on average, yes, you got exceptions to the rule, but when I'm speaking, I'm speaking like on average. We don't have that ability. So men will say, I would rather not listen to this because once we hear something, we got to do it. So when I meet men, they make quick changes, make quick changes because that's how we are. Like I changed my life. I was an abusive boyfriend. I was a womanizer. I was all of that. Look at who I am today. Like men, we make changes and we really make changes, but I'm I'm dealing with women who have been listening to me for years and still in fornication, still having sex on the first night. Like, it's women who follow me and listen to my message every day, and it don't run off their spirit. Like, it don't run out that Jezebel spirit. Like, it's women who listen to me who are still stripping, like are strippers, who are porn stars who are and like listening and like hearing a positive word and it's not affecting change in their life at all. Like they're not, they literally could look me in my face. And so it's like, it must be lust. Like how could you listen, look at a man every day who is not showing chest and abs and licking lips and trying to be a thirst trap, just solely giving wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from God and your life not be changed. So that showed a power of a Jezebel spirit. That showed a power when you could listen. And then too, now it is some women who that they done told me I ran them off. Like my message was too hard and I ran them off. It was too much truth. They ain't want to listen, but then they came back a year later. I done heard that. And so that's what I'd rather happen in then somebody sit because when you sit and you listen every day and you don't make changes, 
the price you pay is going to be greater. You're going to catch AIDS. You're going you're gonna to get herpes. You're going to get syphilis. You're going to get pregnant. Like You're going to pay a greater price when you are under sound wisdom, sound instruction, and you're not listening. And you're not making changes in your life. Like if people listen to me and I'm I'm telling you about how idiotic it is, you know, to be smoking weed and forming that addiction to this drug instead of going for a 30 minute walk, instead of doing some push ups, some sit ups, some squats, instead of getting a release in another way, you forming an addiction to something that's corroding your esophagus, blackening your lungs, shorting your brain circuits. And you forming an addiction to this thing and then telling yourself that it's good for you because it comes from God, green earth. So the cocaine, so the poison ivy. It's like, it's a lot that come from God, green earth. That's not good for you. That'll kill you. It's, it's, it's a whole lot. It's like God is the creator of all things. But as you see in the world, not all things are good. It's animals and insects and snakes that will kill you with one bite with one little strike you will be dead god created that too so it's like if you're gonna be here you got to be seeking change you got to be seeking change and to grow because you can't just and, and i'm gonna tell you if you hear and you're not listening don't waste my time hiring me for no session because that's an hour that I can't get back. That's an hour from my family. I can't get back. So don't hire me for no session. If you're not trying to change your life. If you're not trying to be better. If you're not trying to grow. And don't be in the comments either. Just sit and listen. To your heart ready to change. Don't say nothing. Don't hot book no session. Don't do nothing. Till your heart is ready to change. And that's very, very disheartening. It's like, man, I'm like, Lord, I'm sitting up here talking to I'm blue in the face. So what the Lord is telling me is, Tony, you're going to have to go harder. You're going to have to go harder. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop placating. You're going to have to stop mincing words. You're going to have to, you're going to have to be willing to get counseled in order to call the devil out, in order to say what it really is. And so what I'm seeing right now is Women are becoming worse than men. And the thing about our side is, whichever side that you calling out, the other side think you pandering to the other side. So it's going to be idiotic women who think me saying this is to, to pander to men and to get male followers. Stupidest thing in the world. Only opinion I'm worried about is God's. I did a video and the video I posted it earlier today as a short. I'm saying for men, if your marriage is miserable, ask yourself these questions. Now, of course, those are the questions to first ask yourself as a man to see if you are the problem. It's common sense that if you ask yourself those questions and you don't do any of those things and none of those things are contributing to you being unhappy in your marriage, then it's another issue. So you go from there. I would think that's common sense. It's a lot of men. A lot of men heard that. They thinking that that's the end all be all. They thinking that's the end of the conversation. When that's a that's a fifty seven second clip out of an hour long interview that we had on on them people podcast, and and then the man was like, "Oh, I see so many men." This lady posted it yesterday on her on her Instagram. So many men was like, "Oh, just ask the lady, can you sleep with her, and stop capping or stop whatever." And I'm like, man, that's crazy that you can't even say something to hold men accountable. Without men thinking you trying to sleep with the woman that's interviewing you. And I'm like, have you seen my wife? Like, why would I want to sleep with another woman? Like, what, what can another woman do for me? If I want to sleep with somebody, I can sleep with my wife. It's like, I've, I've been married 16 years. Like, I, I don't have to say stuff to get women. Like, have you not seen my brand? I, I have... A brand like I'm not finna say something to, to get a woman in bed and ruin my entire life. I'm raising I'm raising two sons like over some vagina, but it just showed me how sensitive we are as a people to where you can't even say speak truth without somebody thinking you trying to placate or you know something like that. So I'm gonna tell you, 
if you're on here, you need to listen and get your life together because if you're just on here wasting your time, just wasting time, you're going to pay a price. It's going to be a much greater price, and it's going to hurt you. Hey, listen to me now. Get your life together. God bless you. We'll talk soon.